Now we are continuing the topic of DT and DC interface and last time we have discussed that DT is used for generating the signals just like the printer and the fax machine and DC is to transmit like modulator and demodulator and now we are discussing the standards. Standards means what are the types which are available, what are the standards which are available in the market of DT and DC. So talking about the first standard which we are having is EIA. EIA. Actually these are some names which are given to some type of the connectors of DC and DT. So one is the EIA, under that we are having the first category which is EIA 232 which is very much popular then the second one we are having is EIA 442 then the next one we are having is EIA 449 so these are the EIA standards which are available and the next standard which we are having is ITUT. So ITUT is one more standard. Under that we are having the V series and X series standard. Well, we only must know about these names because all are not in the use. Only EIA 232 is the most useful standard and our total communication will be going on the E232 standard. So this is the main standard which we are discussing and the diagram which is mentioned here, this is of EIA 232. Now here you can see that there are many pins. All the pins are having their own functioning. So we are going to discuss all the pins one by one. So first we are discussing is the data pins. There are certain pin numbers which are given. You can see that this is pin number two pin number 3, pin number 14 and 16. Now if I talk about the pin number 2 that is for transmitted data means by this particular connector if I has to send the data then this pin will work. Now let us suppose that this pin is not in use or maybe this pin is damaged due to some reason then there is pin number 14 as well which is for the secondary transmitted data means there is a backup option which is available for sending the data, transmit the data. Now by this you can already understand 3 and 16 number pin. So pin number 3 is for received data means if I has to receive some data from other system then pin number 3 will work. But if pin number 3 is not working properly then pin number 16 will work as a secondary. Secondary means there is another option for receiving the data. So data pins are only for sending and receiving. 2 and 14 pins are for the transmitting and 3 and 16 pin for the receiving. And these pins are the numbers. Pin number 2, pin number 3, pin number 14 and pin number 16. Now we are learning the next pins which are called the control pins. Well as the name signify Control means they are for the controlling purpose. Data pins are for sending and receiving data. Control pins are going to control that data flow. Now, just pay attention on pin number 4. Pin number 4 is request to send. Well, whenever I want to send the data to some person, a request is generated that whether you are ready to receive the data. So that request is generated with the help of pin number 4 that is request to send but if that pin is not working there is one more pin which is the pin number 19 which is having the same operation secondary request to send 
means if pin number 4 is not working you can send the request through pin number 19 that is already done with the help of the system it is not the based on user system do it if i send you the request and you are say okay no problem then that is called clear to send so pin number 5 is having clear to send clear to send means the other party is ready to receive the data so you are saying the signal clear to send means it is clear to send the data but suppose pin number 5 is not working so no problem pin number 13 is there that is secondary clear to send means you can send the reply from pin number 13 yes you can send the data now pin number 16 is for dce ready DC ready means whenever the modulator or demodulator is ready to do its task, then this pin number 6 will be saying a ready, DC ready. Pin number 20 say DT ready, whenever you are sending a data, then the other person should be ready. So how you will get to know? So from there the signal will come that yes, the other person DT is now ready. Then pin number 8 is received line signal detector means whenever some data is going to receive now from that line the data is coming now you can detect that through this line the data is moving so that signal will come from the pin number 8 but if pin number 8 is not working it is damaged no problem then it is pin number 12 doing the same operation secondary receive line signal detector means through which the data is coming you can detect through that so these are not data sending pins these are the control pins. Control pins means which we are going to control the data like you want to request from other person that I want to send you that is request to send. Other person says okay no problem that is clear to send. When DC is ready to send the data so DC ready. When DT is becoming to receive the data DT is ready. So if the data is moving then signals are detected from the signal detector pin. So these are called the control pins. Now we are discussing the next types of pins in EIA-232 and that is called the timing pin. Timing pins are actually working on the time means at what time which particular device is operating. So these are called the timing pin. First we are having is pin number 15. You can see that transmitter signal element timing means whenever the data is moving from dc to dt at that time what is the timing of transmitter signal that is taken care by pin number 15 and same is done with the help of pin number 24 but there is a opposite opposite means dt to dc so same timing is taken for the transmitter but that is from DT to DC that is a reverse thing. So pin number 15 work on DC to DT and pin number 24 work for DT to DC but they are both for the transmitter signal. Now talking about the receiver signal from DC to DTE whenever data is moving so there the receiver timing is taken care by pin number 17. So these are the three timing pins which are there into the EIA-232. Now we are discussing the other pins. Other pins means these are not the data pins and these are not the timing pins. But these are some other pins. First of all, we can see some pins which are for the testing purpose. Testing means let us suppose that uh, there is a transmission which is going on and we want to test whether that DC to DT interface is working properly or not. So to check that particular DT to DC interface means the wire which, from which data is moving is that wire is properly working. So that interface testing is done with the help of these pins. So pin number nine that is reserved for the testing purpose. Pin number 10 is also reserved for the testing purpose. And now for testing, we should be in the test mode. Means at that time, whenever we are testing, the mode should be test mode. So to apply the test mode, there is a pin number 25. So that is working for the test mode. Whenever we are testing the DC to DT interface, pin number 11 is blank unassigned that is not for some use 
So these are important. Pin number one that is for shield. Shield means some kind of current which is moving or not. That is the shield. Pin number 18 that is for local loop back. We know that whenever we are having the data which is moving and coming to us, that is called the local loop back. Means if you are testing something, there is a loop. Loop means you send the data and it is coming back to you. So this is called the local loop back. There is a remote loop back. Pin number 21, it is working for the remote loop back and signal quality detector. If locally you are checking the loop back, means data is going and coming back to you. That is pin number 18 is working. But remotely, if you are sending the data to the remote person and it is coming back to you, that is called the remote loop back. And that is the pin number 21, which is handling. So ring indicator, that is a pin number 22, ring indicator. Let us suppose that you are going to transmit a data and in between the data is moving in a ring. Ring in the form, data is not moving further. It is creating a ring. So that is pin number 22. Then further, we are having pin number 23, which is data signal rate select means let us suppose that you want to send the data on a specific speed so that is called the data signal rate select that is done with the help of pin number 23 and the last pin we are having is pin number 7 signal ground common return now every circuit electronic circuit is having a ground ground means whenever we are having a positive and negative except that there is a wire many times at the home we have seen that there is a black wire for the a negative and the red wire for the positive and there is a green wire for the ground ground means sometime if there is a short circuit then from that the ground current should be there and there should not be shock to any person so similarly that ground common return wire is also there which is pin number seven now we are learning the sending data through the eia 232 so sending data means if I has to send the data through this EIA 232 standard of DT and DC, what is required means how much volt required for sending and how much volt required for the receiving. Now we must know one thing that there is one thing mentioned which is allowable area. Allowable area means only in this area the data can be sent. Data means whatever the data we are having, we want to send it. So that range we know that is from plus 3 to plus 15 volt and minus 3 to minus 15 volt. So if, if somebody say that sending data, how much volt is required? So we can say that from plus 3 to plus 15 volt of the current is required. Or we can send through minus 3 to minus 15 volt. So that much voltage is required for data transmission. So and this one is the only allowable reason. So you can see that this wave is moving, which is in between the these two. So you can see this way it is moving. So we can only transfer the data in between. So that is the allowable area. So sending the data is between 3 to 15 positive and 3 to 15 negative volt. So now we are discussing the control signal. The meaning is that how much voltage I require for the control signal. Well, the last time we have discussed the data signal or the data sending. Data sending means whatever the data which I have and I want to send that is called the data sending. Now to control that data, there is also the signal passed that is called the control signal. Here we can see that it is the allowable area where we can send the control signal. Again, it is the allowable area. Now allowable area is greater than plus three. So we can say that if I has to make the signal on, so for the on, let us suppose that I have to send the on signal. 
then it should be having more than plus 3 volt so if you are sending more than plus 3 volt then obviously it is indicating that on on means circuit is on and if you are saying off obviously it is less than the minus 3 so to represent the off your voltage should be less than minus 3 volt so by this we can send the control signal and control signals are going to control the data now we are discussing this diagram and this diagram is of pin connection with and without DCE means in first diagram you will see the DC is present and in the second diagram you will see DC is not present that means we can conclude that in some of the points the DC is not required so let us suppose that you just focus on the first diagram which is diagram A DTE connected through the DCE so in the first diagram we are checking that DTE and DC both are present so DTE you know that DTE is focusing for the data transmitter so it is for transmitting and receiving both things are there transmitting and receiving now it is forwarding the data to DCE just like modulator demodulator which is forwarding to the network and through the network it is going to the other person DCE again there are transmitter and receiver both ways so we can transmit and receive through the DTE so that is the first diagram which we are representing that both DTE and DCEs are present and they are doing the roles of sending and receiving transmitting and receiving the data the next we are having is the diagram which is diagram B DTEs are connect directly let us suppose that there is no modulator or demodulator required so in that case we can connect the both DTE together so two DTEs can work together and they are for transmitting and receiving both ways so they can send the data and they can receive the data in both ways so that is also the possibility so DC is required in maximum of the places but sometimes if the modulation demodulation is not there then DC is not required so there we have learned that DT is some of the devices which are going to transmit use or receive the data in the digital form just like our printer fax machines and DCs are only for sending and receiving just like the modulator and demodulator.